The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. It is <laughs> Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Your level best. That's just how you'll feel when you light up a Lucky. Because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to you as a smoker to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And every smoker knows. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Smooth, mild, thoroughly enjoyable tobacco. No wonder more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. It's good to know that fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, by putting you on the right level to feel and do your level best. That's the lucky level, so smoke a lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Get on the Lucky level where it's fun to be alive. Get a carton of Luckies and get started today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most popular restaurants in the country is the Brown Derby in Hollywood. So let's go back to yesterday afternoon and look in as the Brown Derby's head waiters handle the overflow luncheon crowd. Oh, Gus, did you see Mr. Gable at his usual place? No, Chilius. Mr. Gable joined Eve Arden and her party. Oh, that's good. There's so many people waiting. Well, perhaps we can set up some more tables. Hey, Chilius, look who's coming in. Jack Benny. You take care of him. Uh, no, Gus. It's your turn this time. <laughs> no, no. It's your turn. All right, all right. I'll take care of him. He changed networks. Why doesn't he change restaurants? <laughs> oh, Jack, here comes Chilius. Yeah, he'll get us a table. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Uh, hello, Chilius. I'd like a table. They have some lovely tables at Romanoff's. <laughs> I know. Uh, Romanoff sent us here. Oh. Good afternoon, Miss Livingston. I didn't see you. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Benny. You'll have to wait. Every table in the place is taken. Well, maybe we... Hey, Mary, look. Hey, look, there's Jimmy Stewart having lunch all by himself. I'll ask him if we can sit at his table. Uh, but, Jack, if he's eating by himself, maybe he prefers to be alone. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. He'll be glad to have company. Come on. Only uh, let me do the talking. Well. Hey, Mary, look who's here. <laughs> hmm? Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Well, if it isn't Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> you know... You know, uh... You know, Jack, uh, Hollywood's a funny place. You say, well, if it isn't Jimmy Stewart and everybody in the Brown Derby applaud. <laughs> Yes, yeah. By the way, Jimmy, we're in a hurry and all the tables are taken. Would you mind if we joined you? How can he say no? You're already eating his rolls. <laughs> There's enough for both of us. Sure, sure. Come on, let's sit down here. Here, I'll make room for you, Mary. Well, thank you. There we are. Now, Jack, I'll move over so you... Oh, just sit get... still, Jimmy. You need to move for me. I'll squeeze right in here and then we can... <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Jimmy. I knocked over the pitcher and spilled the water. Oh, that's all right. With this weather, it froze before it hit the floor. <laughs> that's right. It, it, here, Jimmy, let me hand you my napkin. And, whoop. <laughs> I, uh, I knocked over the ketchup bottle. Uh, better, uh, better wipe it off, Jimmy. You look like an ad for blood on the moon. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Jimmy. You know, uh, Jack, I've been sitting here eating for 30 minutes. Uh, you've been here 10 seconds, and you've got more on me than I've got in me. <laughs> well, I... 
Well, I, I guess it's because we're in such a hurry. May I take your orders, please? Yes, yes. I'll have a club sandwich and a, a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. Yours, Miss Livingston? Oh, gee, I don't know what to have. Uh, what's that you're eating, Jimmy? Oh, it looks delicious. Oh, this is something my mother always used to make for me. It's my favorite dish. What is it? Matzo ball soup. <laughs> Chili, I'll have a Caesar salad and a pot of tea. Yes, Miss Livingston. Uh, by the way, Jimmy, I saw your latest picture, You Gotta Stay Happy. And you and Joan Fontaine certainly make a wonderful combination. Oh, well, thank you, Mary. Uh, you made that picture for Universal, didn't you, Jimmy? Yes, yes. Before that, I made Rope for Warners, and then I made one over at MGM, one at RKO, one at 20th Century, and then one for Paramount. What's the matter? Can't you keep a steady job? <laughs> Jack. It's just that Jimmy prefers to freelance. Oh, oh. Uh, by the way, Jack, uh, what have you been doing lately? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, uh, I've been rather busy with radio. Radio? Well, aren't you a little late getting into that with television and everything? <laughs> no, no, Jimmy. I've been in radio for 17 years, but I haven't made a picture since I was at Warner's. And I left there because there was always a big issue, you know, when it came to casting. Well, I can understand that, Jack. You and Errol Flynn are the same type. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Uh, Jack had the same trouble with MGM, but they decided to keep Lassie. <laughs> no, please. Anyway, Jimmy, I'm not appearing in pictures because I'm producing them now. Oh, I didn't know you were producing pictures, Jack. Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I just finished my first one. It's called uh, The Lucky Stiff. Starring Dorothy L'Amour, Brian Dunleavy, and Claire Trevor. Soon to be seen at your neighborhood theater. Jack, uh, what are you yelling for? <laughs> Jimmy, if these people can eat here, they can afford to go and see it, you know. You know, a plug's a plug. And a... Mr. Benny, if you'd like, you can move over to this table here. Chilius, I thought you didn't have any empty tables. We've got a lot of them now. <laughs> Well, we'll just, we'll just stay where we are. Yes, sir. Here's your food. We'll get the salad, please. Oh, the salad is mine. Now, let's see. What were we talking about before the food came? The, p the picture you produced, the lucky salad. No, no, the lucky stiff. Oh, oh. <laughs> Say, you know, Jimmy, I've just been thinking. You're a nice guy, and here you've been having a tough, not working steady at one one studio. So I'm going to do you a big favor and put you in my next picture. <laughs> Jimmy, 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 what happened? Jimmy. Oh, that's the first time I ever saw anyone choke on a matzo ball. I probably surprised him with my offer. <coughs> yes, you certainly did. Uh, but Jack, uh, uh, the only reason I can't accept it is because I have so many other commitments. Well, Jimmy, we can make it after you've fulfilled your other commitments. But, Jack, after that, I want to take a vacation. No buts, Jimmy, my boy. Look, at I'll make a big star out of you. Now, you've got to let me make this picture with you. Now, what's the salary you usually get per picture? Water, it's on the floor. So are you. Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, Jack, uh, you better discuss this with Jimmy some other time. It's getting late, and the whole gang will be waiting at the studio for rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'll get the check. Waiter, waiter, our check. Waiter, waiter. Jack, just call him. Don't wave your toupee. <laughs> Jimmy, this isn't a toupee. It's just a small hairpiece. Hairpiece? I'd like to have a fur coat like that. <laughs> I'd like to have you read your line right. <laughs> Jack. What? Suppose I run along and start the rehearsal. Well. Well, see you later, Jack. Goodbye, Jimmy. So long, Mary. Say, Jimmy, have you heard the way people are talking about Mary lately? Talking about Mary? Yes, I hate to see this, uh, say this, really, but, but have you noticed... <laughs> Have you noticed 
how she always leaves the table just before they bring the check. <laughs> it's embarrassing, you know? I hate to see it, too, you know? But anyway, Jimmy, getting back to the picture I want you to do for me. Now, I have a story. Excuse me for interrupting, but I happen to have a snapshot of you, Mr. Benny. Would you mind autographing it? Oh, I'd be happy. Say, Jimmy, would you mind lending me your fountain pen? Not at all. Here you are, Jack. Thanks. Now, let's see. With my very best wishes, Jack Benny. Here you are, lady. Uh, thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Oh, wait a minute, lady. This is Jimmy Stewart. Don't you want his autograph? No, but 30 years ago, I would have. <laughs> Now, look, look, Jimmy, I've got to run over to CBS and rehearse my show. Suppose you come along with me, and we'll discuss a deal for a picture. No, uh, no, Jack, I'd rather not. Here's the check, gentlemen. No, oh, thank you, Julia. No, Jimmy, let me take it. After all, it was your table, and Mary and I barged in. So I insist on paying it. No, no, Jack, I'd feel better if I paid for it. Well, if your health is involved, go ahead. <laughs> I gotta run along and... Gee, my hands are kind of sticky. Where's my napkin? Oh, here it is. Hmm. I can't pull it up. What's the matter with this napkin? You've got my shirt tail. <laughs> no, no. Well, here, I'm, I'm through with it. Um... <laughs> so long, Jimmy. Goodbye, Jack. I didn't realize it was so late. I hope they started the rehearsal without me. Jackson. Well, hello, Jack. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, kid. Uh, by the way, Jack, did Jimmy Stewart agree to let you produce his next picture? Well, not yet, Mary, but I'm sure he'll come around to talk to me about it. Now, come on, kids. We've got a rehearsal to do, so let's get started. Mr. Benny, I've read over my part three times already. Well, good, Dennis. It's nice to know that you're diligent. Diligent? Are we doing a gangster sketch? That's diligent! <laughs> well, don't I get nothing for being close? No. And Phil, look at Phil, watch your cue. Now, you come into the sketch on page 21. 21? Yes. That's all your fingers, all your toes, and one more. <laughs> now, Mary, in this sketch, you're going to play the part of Dennis's wife, and you've just gotten married. Uh, Dennis and I are newlyweds? Yes. And you're in Niagara Falls on your honeymoon. Where am I? <laughs> What? I don't know about you, kid, but I'm on page 22. <laughs> That's 21. I got 11 toes. <laughs> Phil, you miscounter. Try again. Now, Mary, as soon as we try... Jack, what was that? I don't know. Who fired that shot? I did. That reverberation you just heard was the result of a firearm that I discharged to test the acoustical quality of the studio. Acoustical quality? Who are you? I'm Herbert, your sound effects man. Oh, oh. Well, look, Herbert, don't try any more shots. All I want are the sound effects that are written into the script. Well, you can depend on me, Mr. Benny. For years, I have devoted my artistry to dramatic shows, and I have mastered the most difficult sound effects ever heard on radio. Really? Yes. Hmm. One in particular baffled every sound effects man in the industry. But by perseverance and sheer ingenuity, I managed to reproduce it. I see. It was on the Prudential Hour. The scene was a moonlit night, 
and two lovers were dancing out on the patio. Oh, yes, yes, I heard that show. As the soft music filled the balmy summer evening, the two lovers drew closer and closer until his cheek lightly brushed against hers. That was the most delicate sound effect of all. Well, I should imagine it was. How did you get the sound of his cheek delicately brushing against hers? I slapped a hot water bottle with a piece of raw liver. <laughs> Those are the kind of effects we need on our show. Now, Mary, I'll write a scene where you brush my cheek, you know, against your, your cheek against mine. But Jack, liver's 90 cents a pound. Well, just kick me in the pants and she... <laughs> now, Don, let's take the rehearsal from that scene where we're in the house and there's a knock on the door. Okay, Jack. Herbert, uh, give us a knock on the door. No, no, Herbert, a little louder. Herbert, that still isn't loud enough. Uh, why is the knock so soft? I use Jergens. <laughs> oh. Well, then maybe we ought to have a doorbell instead of a knock. There, that's more like it. Well, I didn't do that. What? Jack, there's really someone at the door. Huh? Oh, Don, you're near the door. Open it, please. Say, Jack, it's Jimmy Stewart. You see, Mary, what did I tell you? Came after me already. Come on in, Jimmy. Thanks. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, Jack, I hate to break in on your rehearsal like this, but there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, Jimmy, it's quite all right. We have plenty of time. Not me. I got to go to Niagara Falls and meet Mary. <laughs> Dennis, be quiet. Now, Jimmy, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? It's about the picture. You see, Mary? Now, Jimmy, we can start production on the picture just as soon I as I mean we... the picture you autographed at the Derby. <laughs> you kept my fountain pen. <laughs> Oh, oh. I wouldn't have bothered, but it's a lifetime pen, and I'm young yet. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, here's your pen, Jimmy. Thanks. Now, Jimmy, let's get back to business. I know you made a swell picture call. You gotta stay happy. But I can do so much for you that... Jack, why don't you leave him alone? Can't you see that Jimmy's not interested? But, Mary, I can help him. He doesn't need help. He's already won an Academy Award. An Academy Award, Jimmy? For what picture? Philadelphia story. Who cares about Philadelphia? I'm going to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> now, be quiet. You know, uh, Mary, you know, I... Uh... You're just about the only sensible one around here. <laughs> hey, you know something else? I, I think you're very pretty, too. Oh, Jimmy, do you, do you really mean it? Yeah, sure, of course I do. Come over here a minute, Mary. You know, you have, you have such beautiful eyes and such a lovely complexion. Oh, Jimmy. And maybe sometime I could take you out dancing in the moonlight. Just the two of us, maybe? Out on the patio. He's getting close to her, Herbert. Get ready with the liver. <laughs> Mr. Day. actors get bigger laughs than comedians. Now look, Jimmy. Jimmy, let's settle, let's settle that picture deal we've been talking about. Well, Jack, I... I uh, You're supposed to be mad I, here. Oh, I, I, uh, Jack, I just can't make a picture with you this year. Okay. Academy you, Award, he can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack, I just can't make a picture with you just... <laughs> You'll have to excuse me yeah? I'm going over to dressing room G I have to look over a dramatic script Oh, that's right next door, Jimmy I'll show you where it is Kids, I'll be back in a minute
So, Jimmy, as I pointed out to you, it'll be to your advantage to make this picture for me. Jack, now, you've been talking to me for an hour and a half since we came into the dressing room here. Now, will you please just let me lie here and relax? How about it, will you? Okay, okay, Jimmy. See you later. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum da dee da dee da dum He'll be back, da dee da dum Oh, Don! Don, bring the quartet in now. We'll go over the commercial. Well, Jack, we're going to have a little difficulty with the sportsmen this week. They're having trouble with their wives, and they're all upset. What? Yes, yes, Jack, it's terrible. Their wives want to leave them. All four of them? <laughs> Don, I've never seen a quartet like that. When one has a cold, they all have cold. When one has a headache, they all have headaches. Don, I don't care if they're having trouble with their wives or not. We've got to have a commercial. Now, where are they? Well, they're in the dressing room talking to the wives on the phone. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Don. We'll go in and talk to them right now. And I can't imagine four fellas having the same trouble at the same time. Well, here's their dressing room. Let's go in. Look, Jack, they're still on the phone pleading with their wives. Yeah. <laughs> Say it isn't so Everyone is saying you don't love us Say it isn't so Gee, that's awful I'm sorry, Alan. Everywhere we go Boys, boys Everyone we know Fellas, fellas, look Whispers that you're really going to leave us Say it isn't so Boys, I'm sorry for you, but I need a commercial. Please don't go away. Fellas, really, I need a commercial. Promise you will stay. Boys, look, a commercial. We will fill the house with lucky strikes. You'll get them every day. Thank you. A lucky strike is better than the rest. You'll feel your level there. Don't leave us, darling. Say it isn't so. Boys, I know you're upset, but look at, don't cry. Look at, I'll talk to your wives. I'm sure that everything will be all right. Tell us, look at, right now I need a commercial. Tell us, it'll be all right. Look at, I need a commercial, boys. L S M F T means fine tobacco, fine as you can grow. That's why we're happy. Baby, please don't go. Don. Don, you better take them home. You better take them home. Don, take them home. Maybe they'll feel better tomorrow. I'll see you later, Don. Yeah, I hate to see those fellas so upset. I hope they settle things with their wives. But then that's their worry, not mine. Oh, Jack. Huh? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Jack, uh, I came out here to talk to you. Yes, yes, about the picture. No, not about the picture. Then what is it, Jimmy? Jack, I realize now that when you took my fountain pen and the brown derby, you wanted me to follow you around. What? So, uh... When you took me into the dressing room, told me to lie down and relax and put my feet up on the chair, I should have known you were up to something. Huh? Jack, uh, give me back my shoes. Would you? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, your shoes. Here you are, Jimmy. I'll thank you for my socks, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, your socks. Now, Jimmy, as long as you've got a few minutes while you're putting on your shoes and socks, let's talk about the picture. Now, if you will just... Now, no more talk, Jack. I told you I have too many commitments, and that settles it. Okay, Jimmy, but if you just change your mind, come around and see me. Well, I won't change my mind. Say it isn't so. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> la, 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 la. Now, come on, kids. Let's finish the rehearsal and make it snappy. Rochester's waiting for me out in the parking lot with my car. <laughs> Well, Mr. Benny will be out in about a half hour. I better start warming up the motor. There must be something wrong with the battery again. I better take a look. Now, let's see. There's the battery, and it has the positive and the negative. Then there are the sparks. The sparks are supposed to go from the electrons to the electrodes. Or maybe they go from the generator to the distributor. Or 
And then again, maybe they go from NBC to CBS. <laughs> yeah, I think this loose wire here is the trouble, so I'll just fasten it and... Hello, Rochester. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Stewart. Say, has Mr. Bennett come out of the studio yet? No, but he should be any minute. Uh, by the way, Mr. Stewart, I was over to your house the day before Christmas. Mr. Bennett had me drop off a package for you. Did you get it? Yes, but this time there was too much starch in the collars. <laughs> Well, don't look at me. I'm rough dry. Mr. Benny's the starch man. <laughs> oh, I see. You know, Rochester, your boss amazes me. How long has he been in the laundry business? Oh, a long, long time. Say, Mr. Stewart, you were born May 8th, 1911, weren't you? Yes, that's right. How'd you know? You used to take our diaper service. I did? <laughs> yeah. It broke Mr. Benny's heart the way you and Gary Cooper grew up so fast. <laughs> But, uh, uh, Rochester, I still can't understand a man of Mr. Benny's position having a laundry service in his home. Oh, the laundry's just a sideline. A sideline? Uh-huh. Mr. Benny does more business in his living room than Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> yeah. On dollar day, you can't get near the joint. All right, Rochester. Are we ready to go? Yes, boss. All set. Good. Now, first, I want you to drive me to... Uh, Jack. I'd like to see you for a second. Oh, hello, Jimmy. So you finally changed your mind and you want to appear in my picture. Eh? No, 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 it's not that. There's uh, something I'd like to ask you. What is it? Now, look, uh, Jack, I, you've been using little tricks so I'd follow you around all day, hmm? Well, yes, I must admit I did. You're, you're not angry, are you, Jimmy? Oh, no, no, no. But tell me one thing. What is it, Jimmy? I, I, I know how you got my fountain pen. Uh -huh. I can even figure out how you got my shoes and my socks. Yeah. But how in the name of heaven did you get the filling out of my tooth? <laughs> I'll tell you when we finish the picture. Come on, Rochester, drive the car. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. You see, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's good to know that fine tobacco can do this for you, and that's why it's so important that you select and smoke the cigarette of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. For as every smoker knows, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The experts, men who know tobacco, look to Lucky Strike for their own personal smoking enjoyment. Yes, more independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Luckies regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike and get on the Lucky Level, where there's real joy in living, where it's fun to be alive. The Lucky Level, where you feel and do your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Get on the Lucky level, where it's fun to be alive. Get a carton of Luckies and get started today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Jimmy Stewart for following me around on my program today. And next Sunday, listen in to CBS lineup. The Prudential Hour, Spike Jones. Jack. Just a minute, Jimmy. And after Spike Jones comes Jack Benny, that's me, and my guests will be Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Jack. Jimmy, just a minute. Dinner, Amos and Andy. Sam Spade. Jack, I've got to talk to you. Then there's Life with Luigi, our Miss Brooks, and Helen Hayes. Jack. What is it, Jimmy? I want to go home. Give me my pants. <laughs> there you are. Good night, folks. And don't forget the new Lucky Strike program, your Lucky Strike starring Don Amici, heard every weekday afternoon over most of these stations. is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.